Good day everyone and welcome to this set tier list for the Necrom patch. It's been since high hour since I've made a previous set tier list, so it's been some time and I want to make a new one because since then there's a lot of new sets, a lot of changes to existing sets as well. Some have been nerfed, some have been buffed, and that changes what is strong right now compared to before. Sometimes also I get asked as to what the strong sets for a certain patch are. But over the different patches, not that much changed. It's only over a year or so that it has been now that I do feel like we could use a new set tier list for PvP. These lists now have more value as well, since there are so many sets. Gone are the days of just spinners and hunting's rage that you would run and choosing between 50 sets, because now we are talking about hundreds and hundreds of sets. But most importantly, there's also a new class, the Arcanist, that requires a lot of theory crafting, a lot of sets to look at, in order to find out what the best builds are. A lot of people are looking at this class, trying to find what build they want for it, and for that you have to look at the sets as well. So, with all that theory crafting, I thought it would be nice to have some sort of inspiration, in the form of an updated set tier list showcasing the best sets that could be useful for the Arcanist, as well as all the other classes. This is especially because it can be quite a pain going through every set in a big list in the game, such as what you can find on ESO Hub, and finding out what works best when you make a PvP build. So this video is just going to be a selection of that complete list of the sets that I usually work with when creating a new build for any class, including the new Arcanist class. Just to be clear, I'm going to be talking about the 5-piece sets here. There's also monster sets, mythics and arena weapons, but I'll save that for another video because there's a lot to go through. For these lists, I'm also looking at general applicability, not niche sets. For example, I will be ignoring things like True Sworn Fury and Titanborn, which are really strong sets for ganking, but just for ganking as well. And for that even, almost exclusively used on Nightblade. So that's a very specific thing, a very niche thing to get into. And if I would include that, this video would be an hour long. So I will just talk about the more general sets that are good for open world builds, for battleground builds, both in NoCP and CP Cyrodiil and in Imperial City. Looking at things for solo roaming, but also small group kind of play. And talk about these builds that fit for most purposes in PvP. Now, of course, this video is about the best sets, so in terms of classic tier list rankings, I will talk about the sets on the B tier, which is above average, the A tier, which are good sets, and the S tier, which are the best sets in the game, in my opinion, for PvP. I'll start with the B tier, and then go to A and S tier. Generally speaking, when making a build, most often people also combine a set from the S tier and the A tier. Sometimes you also see something in terms of the B tier, but if you're making something good, picking two S tier sets or an S and A tier set is something that will give you a good spot for a build, no matter the class and no matter the time. So if you want to have some kind of practical guide on how to use this list of sets, here's a good tip. I will start with the B tier, and the first sets I will talk about here is Spinners and Spriggan. These are very old sets, they are from base game, they're very simple as well, they just give you more penetration, one is for more magical oriented setups and the other is for more stamina oriented setups, and they don't give much of it, but it's a good stat to have, so that makes these sets valuable. The fact that it's not so stat dense is a reason that I put it in B tier though. These are good front boss sets, especially for no CP Cyrodiil, but in CP Cyrodiil and Battlegrounds there are many offensive sets that are just more stat dense, that just overtake this. So these sets are easy to get and to play with, they are simple, they are decent, but they are nothing special and prime B tier. Next up is New Moon Acolytes. This set used to be meta, but it got nerfed quite significantly since then, and there's also new sets that perform better than this, so it's not an optimal set anymore. Just like the Spinners and Spriggan sets I just talked about, it's a simple set, this one is also craftable, that you can just front bar and you forget about it, and it will give you a bit of extra damage, it's decent, easy to get, but it has been outdated by better sets that came along. A noticeable difference to the previous Spinner and Spriggan set is that this set will also buff your healing if you put it on the front bar with this set, but it also is going to make your sustain a little more difficult. Next up is Heartland Conqueror. This is sometimes used in combination with Newman Acolyte. Even though I don't really recommend it, it's definitely a solid thing to start with because these are both craftable sets. The bonus from this set is not bad. Similarly to the previous sets, not particularly strong, a good set and forget thing, but there is sets that will outperform it no matter whether you double bar or one bar of this set. Most often I see Heartland Conqueror being double bar though. One Maiden and Dagon's Dominion are two different kind of sets. These sets are a straightforward buff to a specific type of damage, 
War Maiden is to magic damage and Dagon's Dominion is for AoE attacks of all types. The first can be used on, for example, Nightblade or Templar. The second I see most often used on Wardens and then Stamina Wardens specifically. You can't put it on every spec, so it's pretty limited in use cases, and even then there are still better options around, which keeps these sets decent for B tier, but outperformed as well by sets later on in this list. Then perfected Yandir Smite. This is a decent double bar damage buff set, but it does need constant damaging for crit hits, and for the ideal version, the perfected version, you have to farm veteran kinds ages, so it's not that easy to get. 410 weapon damage is decent, not great. 630 weapon damage from the heavy attack is better, but it is a limited time proc. Next to that, this set also has a good 2 to 4 piece bonus. Both in terms of acquiring proc condition and damage, there is a better double bar set later on though. So this is a good set, but it stays in B tier. Next up, Griffin's Ferocity. This set used to be a better set in the past, it used to be used more often, but nowadays I rarely ever see it used. I think that's because it's been overtaken by the widespread use of Race Against Time, which also gives minor force, just like this set, and Phoenix Moth Touch, which is a similar set, also giving minor force, but with a more valuable extra bonus to it. Even though these things have limited the use of Griffin's Ferocity, Griffin's Ferocity is also still a decent option. Especially if you run something like Serpent's Coil, I think it's a valuable slot on your back bar in order to make up from that snare from Serpent's Coil in combination with the Celerity CP, maybe some Swift Trades and Major Expedition. So it's worth putting in B tier. Amoplasm and Eternal Vigor are two similar sets that are double bar to give a big sustain boost. For Battlegrounds and CP Cyrodiil, it's vastly outperformed by Rash Vitality, which I will go over later, both in terms of stat density, Rash Vitality gives more stats, and the fact that you can one bar Rash Vitality, while these sets need to be double barred. These sets are good for no CP Cyrodiil though, since a sustained boost might be necessary there, since you don't get the buffs from CP, which is why I do want to mention this set here. Nightmother's Gaze is the next set, which gives you Major Breach. Major Breach is a really good debuff that you want on basically every build, except maybe Corrosive Dragonites. But most often it's preferred to use a skill for this buff, such as Elemental Drain, Elemental Susceptibility or Razor Cult Drops, instead of sacrificing a 5-piece. So even though Nightmother's Gaze is a good stat dance set, its 5-piece bonus of Major Breach is often just acquired by using a skill instead. That said, there are still some uses in which the set is good, for example on some one bar build where you're limited on bar space so you don't so you can't run one of these skills, or more prominently on knife blades that most often use this set on the front bar for their source of major breach. Next up is Ravager. This is a double barred set that is not often used, but it's actually pretty stat dense. With all four stacks, you get almost 600 spell and weapon damage, and its poor condition can be met pretty easily by just using Razor Caltrops in your build. This skill is also pretty fitting for the more brawling oriented solar setups, and I think this set shines in that kind of setup as well. It's very similar to Yandir's Might in the sense that it also gives a bunch of spell and weapon damage. This one has a little bit of a reduced uptime, but it is, in my opinion, pretty easy to proc if you just have Razor Caltrops, and it is a little bit more stat dense on the 5 piece bonus. That said, it is heavy armor though, which is sometimes not ideal when you double bar a set. So if you're looking for an easy to get set that needs to be double barred when you're already using one or more arena weapons, this is definitely worth checking out. Then there is Skin Marcher's Cruelty. This set is sometimes called Reverse Trickery, and it will apply a major debuff to the enemy rather than a major buff to you, like Data Trickery does. And it can be a good option for specs that focus on heavy brawling and are constantly surrounded by enemies or fighting resource towers, for example. And it can also be good in small groups to provide some valuable debuffs to all the enemies. It's not that frequently used at all though, and if you or your group already have those debuffs, Kid Marshall's Cruelty obviously decreases in performance. Compared to Daedric Trickery, some of these sets buffs are also not that valuable. For instance, Major Breach is often already present in a build, be it in group play or for solo play, and Major Cowardice and Major Maim are not that sought after at all, so this set is a B tier set. Then Serpent's Disdain. Stats effects are an important part of a build to consider, since many of them apply valuable debuffs or apply a lot of pressure to the enemy. For example, minor vulnerability from shock damage or damage over time stats effects from poison and fire skills. That's also why charged is one of the most used traits on your weapon, but if you can't use this trait or if you run dual wield and only have it on offhand, it can be difficult to get a good uptime on these valuable effects. That's where Serpent's Disdain comes in. 
Since it gives a virtually permanent uptime on status effects, this set translates in a lot of pressure over time, and is definitely worth considering with a status effect oriented build, but if you're not happy with the uptimes already. But remember though that it's only really valuable if you have many different kinds of status effects in your build, not just two or three, and if you don't have a good chance of procking them already. So that's also why I'm keeping it just about in B tier instead of A tier. That's it for the B tier sets. Now I'm going to go to the A tier sets. So these are sets that I consider good and that I will use pretty regularly in PvP builds as well compared to the B tier sets. And the first set in this tier list, which I think is a prime example for it, is Clever Alchemist. This is an old, craftable, a staple set. It's been sold for a long time and it's a balanced choice for a backboard damage buff. It's a really nice damage buff added too. It's a high amount of spell and weapon damage. The extra health it gives on the 2 to 4 piece bonuses is nice as well. The only drawback is, is that it's a short duration. It's about a, a little bit less than 50% uptime. So you need to play around with this and time the uptime of this set with the ultimate burst. Otherwise you're sort of wasting it. And this way the set does control and limit a bit how you play. Which I do think is what keeps it in A tier instead of S tier. But you could make an argument for even S tier to be honest. Then there is Olorime and Perfected Olorime more specifically. This is a really good backbar damage buff set, just like Clever Alchemist, but with a higher uptime. This gives major courage, so it gives a little bit less stats. But on several classes and playstyles, if they have an AoE, this is a good backbar set still because the uptime from the set is permanent. This set is good for solo play, but it shines in smaller groups in my opinion, where one person wearing it can give a really good uptime and major courage for everyone. This is more difficult to do with the spell power cure, since your cross healing might not overheal enough for a good uptime with that set for Major Courage. And that counts even more so for solo play, where Olorimi is by far a better choice than spell power cure. I do think when groups get bigger, spell power cure can be easier to use though, and there it's a bit more of a choice whether you want spell power cure or Olorimi for Major Courage. Next up we have three similar sets, and that's Burning Spellweave, Briarheart and Armor of Truth. These three A tier spell and weapon damage proc sets are medium, light and heavy armor and they are pretty decent for PvP, most often used for front barring. I'll start off with Burning Spellweave, which is a good option for many setups that have flame damage in them, be it through the skills or through fire staff light attacks. But it's especially so for Dragonites where it can even be backboard since all their damage is flame damage and have many dots as well. The damage buff in itself is good enough for just a good front bar set, a pretty stat dense, and the uptime is pretty good as well, especially if you just time it a little bit and you realize that as soon as you swap to the front bar, if you have a build that uses that, the set is going to proc, then you have 8 seconds to burst with it. The fact that it wears off after these 8 seconds and then it has a 12 second cooldown is not too much of a bother for me as well, because most often when I go to the front bar, I do a quick burst, no matter what class it is, that will not last any longer than 8 seconds anyway. After that I'll be back to the back bar and healing, defending or running away in case I'm in a heavily outnumbered situation, and then I'm not bothered about damaging my enemies regardless. Then Briarheart, the second set, this is the medium armor version of this. It's not as commonly used as Burning Spellweave, but I do think it's still decent. The reasons for that I think is because it has a lower uptime, and there are some competing sets that will be addressed later on in the video as well. It also has a healing effect attached to it, which you could consider a buff in theory, but in practice it's only a really small amount of healing and you're not really noticing it at all in PvP. Even in PvE I think it is barely noticeable. So this set is really just for the damage boost that you could consider this for. It has a very similar playstyle to Burning Spellweave as well. Next up is Armor of Truth. This is the heavy armor variant which gives a similar spell and web damage boost. But this time it's tied to the off balance mechanic. It's a little more difficult to proc than Prior Heart and Burning Spellweave, since you are locked to using Dizzing Swing or be a Dragonite that provides off balance, and its damage is very directly outperformed by an S tier set later on in the video that also procs off off balance. So this set does stay in A tier at best. Next up is Way of Fire. This is now a different kind of set, this is a proc set, which hit pretty hard. It's a damage over time set, and it works best with weapon dots can also proc off light attacks and weapon swimmables, but I see it most often used with twin slashes, often in combination with master dual wields. 
Sometimes I also see it used with Crushing Shock as a front bar proc set on, for example, the Magicka Sorcerer. And even though it is indeed a good extra bit of damage for a front bar set, it's definitely nothing game breaking, so it stays as a good A tier set. Then Venomous Smite. Like Trial by Fire, this is a good damage over time proc set with two main differences. Firstly, it doesn't require weapon attacks to proc, so it's more generally applicable. And secondly, it's got a longer cooldown and only a partial uptime. So this is a bit of a drawback and a benefit of Venomous Smite compared to Way of Fire, making it also a perfect example for the A tier sets. In comparison to the previous set as well, is that this set is in medium armor, so depending on whether you want to have some more heavy or medium armor pieces, you could consider Venomous over Way of Fire. Regardless, if you want some extra proc that deals a little bit of top damage, both Venomous and Way of Fire are good sets to consider. Then there is Relican, and preferably Perfected Relican. This is one of the better double bar damage sets I was talking about in the B tier. It's a really good damage proc. The main drawback to this set is the proc requirement. And you need to be able to light attack an enemy constantly, and that's why it's only really used on ranged classes with a double ranged weapon. I have some examples for this. On Sorcerer, for example, it's a good use, but I also had a Necromancer build at some point. That will still work. That also relied a lot on this set for a constant amount of damage. It's a bit like scavenging the mice, which I will talk about later, but adult versions of it. It's good for its niche, but it has limited use anywhere else. So it is an A tier set. Next up is the infamous Mara's Balm. This used to be one of the best sets in the game, definitely in the S tier list before, but now it got nerfed. The set is still so strong that even with that nerf, it's still an A tier. And keep in mind that this is like the third nerf it has gotten as well. The constant healing bonus, the purge and life saving burst heal is just so much that one set does, so it's still a good set to greatly boost your survivability, especially for outnumbered play. Next up is Pariah. Pariah is good for extra survivability, it's been around for a while and has been meta too at some point, but it has since been overperformed by some other sets and by the fact that you have to double bar it for maximum effectiveness. It's still a valid set though, a bit like a second undeath passive from the vampire skill line, and I regularly put it in no CP zero deal builds to significantly buff the survivability there. I also use it often on werewolf builds, no matter whether it's in no CP or CP zero deal and battlegrounds, since you don't have the big survivability boost from that vampire undeath passive I mentioned before there. And without something like that, executes just completely disintegrate you, for example, the Templar's Radiant Oppression. So I do consider Pariah a good pick for Whale specifically as well. Next up is the Gourmand set. This is a crit set that can be used on top of other crit sets that we'll go over later. Generally speaking, it's outperformed by Alder's Wrath, since that gives you the option of armor weight and extra crit chance and a small loss of about 5% crit damage. But Gourmand is still a good set as well, if you have enough crit chance already and you really want to focus on pushing that crit damage as high as you can. Tied to the Gourmand set with a very similar vibe to it is the Forest Wraith set. Where Gourmand focuses on pushing crit damage if you don't need crit chance, this set is going to focus on crit chance if you like this or if you have already enough crit damage. An important side note is though that Forest Wraith is only for classes that use mostly their own skills for damage instead of weapon skills. And the main examples here are Nightblade and Templar, where it can be a good pick. It's also a craftable set, so it's easy to get in whatever weight you deem best and you don't need to farm it. But in the end, it is also outperformed by Alder's Wrath, in my opinion. Then there is Scavenging the Mice, a set to which I referenced a little bit earlier as well. This is the hardest hitting proc set in the game, a singular burst with a huge tooltip attached to it. It can be avoided by roll dodging or blocking, but even then you will hit it pretty frequently. And it goes great with an undodgeable stun. The proc requirement is a little tricky, making it unreliable to time the proc and you have to react when the proc happens instead of planning a burst combo with it. I think that's pretty much a main drawback with it. But in the end that's also a good thing too, because this set would be extremely obnoxious if you could really reliably burst an enemy down with it. Otherwise, it is an A tier set, it hits very hard, but it has limited use cases and it's a little bit unreliable to use yourself. Rush of Agony is a set with a similar mechanic to Dark Conversions, which I will talk about later, and it has some bonuses and drawbacks compared to it. First of all, it doesn't apply CC immunity when the enemies get pulled in with this set, which means that you can follow up the pull from this set with an AOE CC like Dawnbreaker, Soul Tether or something else, 
making for a great, unavoidable AoE damage burst. I've even seen this set used in combination with another set that has a pull to it, for example Dark Conversions, to pull enemies in twice in a row. It also deals some damage to further emphasize that damage burst. The drawbacks from this set are that it does lock you into using a cap closer, which is not optimal on many setups, so you're forced to for example run Nightblade with Ambush or the other morph, or using Critical Charge from two-handed skill line. Next to that, it does have a target cap of 6 people as well, unlike Dark Conversions, which doesn't have a target cap, so it's still possible to bomb with this set, but it does have its limits. Overall, this is a good set to build around for outnumbered fights, and it can have a big impact, but it's also limited in use cases, so I'm keeping it in A tier instead of S tier. Next up is Powerful Assault. This is a more group-focused set, as the bonus is rather small for just making a solo build with it, but for this group-focused application, it is a really good set, since it gives yet another unnamed damage boost that can be stacked on top of other bonuses such as Major Courage, Minor Courage, and Rally Cry. But unlike Rallying Cry, it also doesn't decrease in value with an increasing amount of group members, so when setting up a group composition, it's a good idea to have someone wear this set with Resolving or Echoing Vigor. Deadly Strike is a set that was more popular in the past, but it does remain a good option for dot focus setups and especially Templars, since it gives a very nice damage buff to most of the toolkit of those builds. Often though, it's preferable to go with a set that gives a bigger damage boost for a short window, but if you're not into playing around those mechanics, this set is a very easy and good damage buff, also in medium armor, which in my opinion is the best armor weight, so you're good to go with that. Then there's Essence Thief. This set is also a classic and spawns a pool which you have to run into in order to get a strong damage buff, an unnamed 10% damage buff, and some sustain. That makes it a very good set on paper, but its mechanic can make it rather difficult to play with in practice. Even if you're a melee class that has no problem running after the pool, you might still miss out on the buff if it spawns in a difficult to reach location due to where your enemies are, or if the terrain on which it spawns is difficult to access. It's definitely a great set for more stamina oriented setups in dueling, though it's tedious to run in combination with Serpent's Coil, which you also see a lot in duels. So, in theory, a great set. In practice, there are some issues that stop it from being an S tier set, in my opinion. In general, though, I really like the design of this set, and I think this is one of the prime examples of what a fun set should do in ESO. And then, for, in my opinion, one of the best crit sets in the game, or the Schroff. This is a very basic set, but also a very good set, both in PvE and in PvP. I usually put it somewhere in between the A tier and the S tier, and that is because it's a really nice buff in crit chance and crit damage, but it doesn't just carry an entire part of your defense or offense or sustain, it doesn't just make a build completely different to what it was before, unlike some of the other S tier sets such as Acuity, Rush Vitality or Drogakin. It's most often used as a bonus, an extra on top of other things, a really good bonus at that, but on top of other parts of a crit build. And such a crit build can work with other sets as well, as I've mentioned before, Gourmand and Forest Wave are two other options that you can use instead of all Wrath as well. Then we enter into the S tier sets. So these are the sets that I consider to be the best in the game right now. And for starters, I have a pair of sets, which is Plague Break and Vicious Death. These are the PvP bombing sets in the game, both solo play and for group, and it is these sets that you need to fight larger groups and eliminate them all at once. Playbreak is for longer setups and longer chain reactions. It's also medium armor, while Vicious Death is light armor. Both sets work for most bombing builds, such as the classic Nightblade, Tether, and Proxy bombing, as well as the Carve bombing that you can do on any class, but, but is most often applied on the Dragonite. Especially if you're not pulling enemies in close by bombing in a choke point, or with Dark Conversions, Plague Break is better in my opinion. Vicious Death is more of an instant explosion when everybody else already stacked up. In general, these sets have a huge influence on PvP, because just about everybody plays differently because of these. You have all the people that use it to fight outnumbered, but you also have all the Zergs that go about, and that actively think because of these sets to sometimes stack a little bit less. Now luckily enough, they don't always think of that, so Bombers always have some job to do, but in general, it does affect just about everybody in PvP. Next up is Mechanical Acuity. This is an excellent burst set on crit builds, but there's a bunch of remarks to make with this set. Firstly, to even proc this set well, you need a lot of damage instances per second. This will make sure some damage is not critting, and the set can then gain more stacks of Mechanical Acuity, and the effect will last longer. 
The main examples for this are Templars with jabs and Dragonites with damage over time effects. Those are then immediately also the class this is most used on. On Templar, it's a long time staple for AoE burst. On DK, it's a bit newer. Acuity DKs can keep this set up through dots, but have the added benefit of making everything uncounterable with Shattering Rocks or Fossilize, and often attempt to get huge damage bursts with the Molten Whip through the usage of Mechanical Acuity, Corrosive, Ultimate, and stacking up the bonus damage of Molten Whip by casting other Ardent Flame abilities. But despite those side remarks to make, if you have a build on which you can use this set, it's a really strong set that dictates how you play and also gives you a huge amount of extra burst because crits are an important thing in PvP now. Next up is Phoenix Moth Turge. This is a relatively new set that gives a good damage buff with spell damage, weapon damage and crit damage. The requirement is that you don't have race against time of course, which means that classes that use their own mobility skills like Sorcerers, Wardens and Nightblade are the only ones that use this, except when, instead of Race Against Time, people use Mistform as a mobility skill, in which case any class can use this set. In that case, it's a simple good damage buff that works well solo, but excels in group play as well to provide this to everybody at ease. It has a very simple proc condition of just healing somebody, and it has a good uptime similar to Rallying Cry. Just to give a quick example, two Wardens that go in duo PvP one that has Phoenix Moth Turge and the other one that has Rallying Cry can be a really good synergy between those two players and between those two sets. Same counts for other classes like Dragonite, of course. Then there is Toon's Favor. This set I've referred to before with some similar mechanics to some other sets in A tier like Burning Spellweave and especially Armor of Truth, with it being a front bar set that gives a good damage boost for a short duration. However, since this damage boost here is penetration, and a lot of it too, it becomes a better option than those previous sets. It's also not a named buff like Major Breach, so you can stack it on top of other sources of penetration and have a really good amount of penetration this way, which is going to be a big damage buff. It also has an excellent 4-piece bonus, it's also craftable and thus easy to get in any armor weight that you want. And the only downside I could name for this set is that you have to play around the off-balance mechanic, again limiting you to dizzying swing setups or Dragonites that don't use Corrosive. If you're playing this set and if you are on outnumbered as well, you're going to have really good uptime and a really good bonus from this Stoon's Favor set. Twice Fanged Serpent is a Craglawn trial set, so it's not too hard to get, and one of the best penetration sets in the game next to Stoon's Favor. It's usually double barred, unlike the previous, but it has a really easy requirement of simply damaging the enemy. This can be combined nicely with arena weapons on one or both bars and then another 5 piece set like Rallying Cry if you use only one arena weapon. It's also in medium armor which is currently the best armor weight in PvP in my opinion so no problem there and it's simply going to buff your damage quite significantly. Two more things to note here is that this is an unnamed buff of penetration as well, so you can stack it with other sources of penetration, such as Major and Minor Breach and Stoons even, though the latter would probably be overkill. An interesting similar set to this one is Shattered Fate, which is a special set that also gives a lot of pen, but only on the 5-piece bonus. It is a little less stat dense, which makes it a bit worse. It doesn't have a proc requirement though, which you could consider a benefit in theory, but in practice that doesn't really matter since you have to try really hard not to damage your enemies for 5 seconds. I think the main benefits of the Shattered Fates set are that they are craftable, so if for some reason you don't want medium armor, here's an option as well. And you also don't have to do any trial farming, even though Craglon trials should be quite fine, regardless. Next up is Drogerkin's Grip. This set is simply the best damage out there if you have a build that can provide many little instances of damage. For example by using Crushing Shock with a charge trait for stats effect procs or by running many dots like on a Dragonite. Death class as well as Sorcerer and some Arcanist builds are the main users of this set, but in general you can use it on any class if you just build with enough little instances of damage. For example I also have used it on a Necro build, a ranged one, in combination with Relican for a big damage boost. Rogan does have a 10% healing reduction, but since this set is most often front barred, that's not much of an issue, since you usually really only care about healing on the back bar as your burst heals are there, and the only healing that still ticks on the front bar are just some dots and some vigor ticks. Then there is Wretched Vitality. This set is definitely one of the S tier sets nowadays, because it has a huge impact on any build it's equipped on. It simply fixes your sustain by itself and allows you to push damage with everything else. 
It's a very stat dense set and it works excellent for solo builds. And this is why it's one of the most recommended sets I see from other people, but also for myself, just because it makes life so much easier if you never have to worry about sustain much, both in fight and while theory crafting. I say there's two side notes to make here. Firstly, this set gives so much sustain that it could even be over sustain, and that is something that you could consider as wasted stats that would have been better spent with another set. But on the other hand, over sustain is not that bad either if it's just a little bit, since I usually play solo, and while you play solo, it really doesn't hurt just to be able to cast another two roll dodges or to spam your burst heal a bit more. In groups, this set loses effectiveness pretty quickly though as the group size increases because you get a lot of bonuses in sustained survivability from your group members and it's best to come with sets that also provide buffs to your group members or just give you a huge damage buff yourself. But that doesn't take away that it's an important S tier set in the game. Next up is Histap. This is the heal proc set that is most commonly used now that Mara's Balm has got a nerf. It gives a decent back bar heal that will transfer to the front bar as well after your proc it. And it can be used on classes where you feel like the healing of your skills is not enough yet. Good luck buying an ice staff of it right now though because people are now looking at this set to boost their healing further. On that note, I do have to mention that it's not as strong as the old Mara's Balm. It's still a really good healing set that will be a large part of your total healing output on yourself, but it's not the triple effect that Mara's Balm had where it gives both a heal, a purge and a burst heal. And then very related to his sap and Mara's Balm is Daedric Trickery. This set gives a large amount of survivability and is going to make a big difference if you choose to use it. The only downside is really that you can't use it anywhere. That is simply because you need to use it on sets that don't already have the major buffs it gives, and that's for example Dragonite. On this class, it's definitely an S tier option, just as for other classes that don't have those buffs yet and want a big boost in overall survivability. The RNG part of it can be considered a downside as well, but generally speaking, it gives a good uptime on two very strong major buffs. I placed it in S tier here over A tier, also because of the Mars Ball nerf, which I think may bring some more interest to this set, especially for me personally, now as a replacement for a big survivability boost on the back bar. And then last, but definitely not least, is Rylan Cry. This set has been in the game for some time now as one of the absolute meta sets for backboring in PvP, simply because it gives a huge amount of survivability with a crit chance, but also a damage increase with 300 spell and weapon damage. This set right now is even more valuable because the Impenetrable trait is pretty weak right now. Impenetrable only offers a little bit of crit resistance, only 2% per trait, while Rallying Cry just offers you all the crit resistance you need in one go, and you can safely use your armor traits for something else like Well Fitted or Divines with the Shadow Bunders, thus giving you extra stamina sustain or even more damage on a crit build. And that's it for the S tier and for this entire guide. So just as an outro, a couple of extra things to mention. Firstly, this tier list, you might wonder, is this complete? Probably not. There's constantly new sets that we find every now and then for specific builds or for more general applications. So it can be that this tier list might need some updating in the coming weeks or months and so, but we will see how it goes. And generally, if you want to have a nice overview of the strong sets in the game, this guide will last for a long time, I think. And if you look at the builds on my website, eso-pvp-builds.com, you'll also see a lot of inspiration in terms of what sets you can use to make or edit an existing build. Regardless, I hope this set tier list can help you out for making a build now or in the future. And I hope you've enjoyed watching and listening. Thank you very much for clicking on this video and making it all the way to the end if you're still here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.